Hey gang, this is John. Today I'm going to be evaluating a couple of knives, um, a continuation of evaluating the knives. The first one, the Gerber Bear Grills Ultimate Pro Survival Knife. I'll be evaluate. I'll be continuing my evaluation of this one. Full tank construction. Um, a lot harder steel, a much improved knife over the first ultimate uh, survival knife. Got a much nicer sheath too. That's the first one that I'm going to be working. I'm going to be working with both this knife and one of my favorites, Habila's Bush Tools Trapper. This is a five-inch blade, full tank construction, phenomenal handle, very comfortable. I'm going to be evaluating or um, giving both of these knives a workout because I'm uh, doing evaluation on both of them. So I thought I would come out here and do some um, fire building, and um, I think you're going to enjoy okay. this. Stay with me. Here's what I'm looking for. This right here is a a basswood uh, that has fallen over. So what I'm going to do is cut a section of this off, maybe a couple of sections, and um, uh, use that for my fire. Back again, uh, I cut off this piece. You can see it's um, it's dead, and cut the end off of another one. And this is a piece of hardwood that I uh, found that I'm going to use this for a um, baton okay so I'm going to cut this up into smaller pieces and um, I'm going to do that I'll do that um, off camera because I don't have a whole lot of time and I'll get back to you as soon as I uh, cut up this piece into two and then I got an end piece um, so I'm going to be using these shorter pieces. I might just take that one home. I use my trusty Baco saw. I, that's why I always carry a saw with me because when um, you have to split wood, it's a lot easier if you got flat surfaces. Or at least for me it is. So I'm going to readjust the camera and we're going to start. Um, okay, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be evaluating a couple of different knives. Uh, the first one is the um, okay. the first one is the trapper made by Habilis Knives. I did another video on this before, but I'm still evaluating it. So um, what I'm going to be doing with this one is I'm going to be doing a one stick fire. And I'm also going to be cutting out uh, the makings for a bow drill set. And then I'm going to finish off with a different knife. Um, I'll be giving specs and stuff for all of them at a later time. And um, then I will reference all the videos that the knives were in. Um, that way you can see all the different things I've done with them. Okay, so to start off, we're going to... Well, we're making a one stick fire, first of all. So the, use, the time I do something like this is when it's raining out and everything is soaking wet. So I gotta get the inside of the wood. So the first thing I do is you, you wanna make sure you make, uh, get out of the rain. So you set up your shelter, tarp or poncho or whatever, get under, out from under the rain, collect your wood, and then you start um, opening it up because you don't wanna be opening up your wood and starting to have a fire when it's raining all over it. So. With that said, we're going to start with this one. And this is my hardwood baton. This wood that I'm using right now is basswood. It's my favorite wood for bow drill sets. Okay, see if I can cleave off 
part of this so we can use it for a hearth board. This looks a little thicker. Perfect. That's a perfect hearth board. Okay, there's my hearth board. Now I'm going to make a boat, the drill out of this piece. It's splitting off a little funky. If this is wood is not good enough, I'll try to use this other piece. Let me see how this works. This has got a knot in it right here. So I'm trying to take care of that first. Uh, this knife works great. I love the, the, the ergonomics of the grip is phenomenal. Uh, coolness factor, this is like about a 9 or 10 for uh, how it looks. A great success with that hearth board so hopefully I'll get a spindle that I don't have to do too much carving on one spot. Let me see if I can try to carve on it like this. Come down at an angle. Try to carve out some of that belly. That helped out some. Okay. Well, I'll have to do a lot of carving on that. That's going to be my spindle. Okay. The rest of this, I'm going to make a one stick fire. So. Put it down.
So you just keep splitting it down. Get smaller and smaller pieces. King onto that. I'm gonna try to keep all my pieces straight. I hope I have time to do all this stuff. Okay, I'll save that one. Gonna save a couple pieces to make feather sticks out of. So all you do is you just keep processing it down until you get smaller and smaller pieces. That one I basically just took the bark off of. Okay, I think you get the idea. I don't want to belabor the point, but the Trapper by Habilis Bush Tools. I'll make sure I put a link at the bottom of this video so you can see them. But as you can see, the handle ergonomics are fantastic. It just really fits your hand perfectly. It's got a nice choil to choke up on it. It's got a five inch blade. Um, I'll give you all the specs later on, the weight and stuff. But, phenomenal knife. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put that one away and I'm gonna use the other knife that I've been um, yeah, testing out. And, that is the Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro Survival Knife. It's the newest one that just came out. It's uh, 3 8 or 3 16 full tang. Um, they've made the this, this steel stronger, and uh, when I do the tabletop for the final thing, I'll uh, give you all the specs of steel and all that kind of stuff. But um, it has a great handle, and what I'm going to be doing with this with I'm going to be doing feather sticks because I had done the um, the first bow drill I made was already with this, so I was doing batoning and um, that type of work. So today I'm going to be doing feather sticks with this.
is extremely sharp. It's uh, and this one, you got to have a real shallow angle of attack, or it uh, shaves off too much wood. So you have to be real careful with uh, making sure that it's you're a real shat holding this at a shallow shallow angle. You can see those. Try another piece. And it's okay if they, that was a little bit thick, it's okay if they fall off because you can collect them. But this would be the dry inner wood after you uh, got rid of the wet outer layer. So you'd be making your, if you didn't have any tinder, and this is the case where you wouldn't have any tinder if you hadn't collected it once it was, when it was dry. So now it's kind of an emergency situation where you got to try to get this going and I always carry tinder with me but for this experiment I'm not going to use it I like this knife so much better than the uh, first one that came, they came out with. Gerber really listened to everybody. The steel is better, harder. Um, the knife is full tang now. They um, got rid of the serrations. I guess the, the other one they finally came up with a non with a non serrated version of that other one but I didn't purchase it because I really wasn't happy with it before. Okay, so I'm gonna just see if I can get this going. It's got a really nice um, place to strike a ferro rod. It comes also, the sheath comes with a ferro rod. Um, I don't care for it because I have so much trouble getting it out. I mean, if, when your hands are cold, that's when um, you need your dexterity. Wow. That didn't happen too often. Well, as you can see, I got my one stick fire and uh, luckily it took the first strike which that's um, doesn't happen very often 
feather stick with the Gerber Ultimate Pro survival knife. Bear Grylls. The sheath is way nicer than the old sheath too. They made a lot of improvements. Okay, next thing we're going to try to do is make a bow drill set. I can get rid of this. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to carve the spindle with this knife. I'm going to get a lot closer. sit here and try to see if I can get a spindle carved out quickly before it gets too dark. I got a lot of material I got to get rid of on this thing. hog off as big a piece as I can right now. Because... because I gotta get it cut down quickly. For uh, you new people, a chest lever grip utilizes the your back muscles you hold the knife with the uh, edge of the blade towards your knuckles with your thumb on top and you put your hands together and then you just expand your back muscles like that so it's a pretty powerful cut you get a lot of power there so you can get a lot of material removed quickly. This one's got a knot in it. So I'll just chop that off there. Helped immensely. Okay. Oh, I'm also using my new HD camera. My other one finally just got rid of it because in the middle of my videos it was um, just shutting itself off and telling me that I needed to use the battery that is compatible with the camera, which it was the one that came with it, so there's definitely something wrong with it. I stay on camera. I'm trying to do this all on camera so that you can see all the steps that you go through. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it super thick either because the thicker it is, the slower it spins.
Okay, now one end you're going to point just like a pencil, so it's going to have a tapered end that's more gradual. Like this one does, and it doesn't need to be really totally pointed. Like mine's a little too pointed, really. Does it? Because you don't want to sacrifice tip strength, especially if it anything gets wet, it'll um, just grind off. Okay. Okay. Now that it's pointed, you want to make sure you don't stab yourself. You gotta be very aware of everything you're doing and keep your mind on it. Okay. What I'm doing now is I'm just making sure the center of axis, uh, I'm maintaining a center of axis because you don't want the thing wobbling. So um, you wanna try to get both pointed ends at the center of axis of the center of mass, whatever. So, our center of axis is not center of mass, but so now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm um, creating a very a blunt, real blunt point on this one because I just I need enough of a point to get it started in the um, hearth board. Okay, that's going to do, here's my hearth board, so I will just make it right here, I want to have flat sides, you see this knife is doing a really good job. I'll just flatten both the other sides too. Okay. So I'm going to get off my spindle. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a spot in it. And the way you pick that is you put the spindle on so it's flush with the edge, and then you move it over. 50% more just like that and then you mark the wood okay it's soft enough that you can make a mark on it now I'm going to take the point of my knife put it on the ground or on a piece up against a tree and I'm going to create a, a divot just with the point of my knife okay you see that right there? That's the divot I created. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn that in and um, get, the, get the process started. For that I'm going to have to readjust the camera so you can see me better. Okay. And for this experiment I'm going to be using my trusty bearing blocks these are the bearing blocks that I'm uh, selling for fundraiser for the scout troop um, if you're interested in these uh, PM me and I will um, let you know the prices and uh, and how to get uh, get one or the other the other one I have I'm just going to use the one but I that's this is a standard model. This one right here is a deluxe model, and it actually has a roller bearing in the center of it. It's got the center is a polished stainless insert, conically grooved out, and then there's a roller bearing around it, 
And the nice thing about these, they were over engineered actually. The behind this bearing is a thrust bearing because this type of bearing is designed for loading this way, not this way. It's not designed to, to handle when you're pressing it down on this, this is an axial load. But what is designed for that is the thrust bearing that's behind there. So there's actually a thrust bearing behind this bearing so that this thing basically is uh, impervious to any, you know, getting damaged or anything. So once again, that's the deluxe model. This is a standard model that just has a uh, stainless steel insert in it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my bow and I'm gonna load the bow. I'm right-handed, so I hold the bow in my right hand and I take the spindle with the part. This is the part that's gonna be down. This is the business end that's gonna be in the wood. So it come up through the center of it and then I just twist it on itself and that puts it on the outside of the string. If it's on the inside, it will jam when it gets to both ends. So, once again, I put my foot down so that my instep, the center of my foot or my instep is about uh, even with the notch or the where the hole is going to be and about an inch away so that what that does is that puts my hand right up against my shin. That's where you got to lock it in and if it's that, if you get your foot in that spot, that'll make the spindle perpendicular and that's what you're looking for. Okay, so you just want to start out slow. All we're doing now is we're creating friction and heat to just to start the process. Okay, so now you put that down. Also, if it's wet out, you want to make sure this stays on something dry. So I'll put it over here. I'll just stick it right there because it's not, it's not wet out. Okay, there's the spot now, right here. And what I'm gonna do is, and this is the bearing block, I just used the standard one. You saw how fast that worked. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut the notch out. And for that, to me, it's easier to use a saw. I always carry, this is a Swiss Army knife. Uh, I think this is the camper model. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start I'm just cutting right dead center line of the of the where the notch is and I'm just gonna go just almost to half just almost to the center of that black spot. Just want to be careful with this saw because it's extremely sharp. They're still a little awkward trying to saw on a piece of wood like this, but I like doing this better than carving it. Some people carve the whole thing. To me, it's easier to start it with a saw. It's a little more controlled. Okay, you can see that. Put the saw in there so you can tell where the stopped. There's the center line. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the blade and carve it out. This part of the, this work is fine work, so I use a thin bladed knife. I could use um, that other knife. Okay, so now I've got this um, other in knife. In fact, I'll go ahead and use it. So now knife. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create now a notch. You wanna make sure you never cut towards your hand. Now the front end of this, I'm going to chamfer at the bottom so that it has a good spot for the coal to, to collect. And I'll show you what that means in a second. That's what I'm talking about. Chamfering it right there. That's the bottom, that's where the, the, the coal is going to collect. Now the notch you want to make, people say like about an eighth of a pie. 
like if it was a, a uh, if the whole circle was a piece of pie or was a pie. Um, other rule of thumb is just about an eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch notch. I think that's going to work. Take a look at that. So now. you put your knife away. I'm going to use my um, ember catcher that I made out of a belt, a piece of the end of a belt, and it's got a split ring in it so I can keep it on my pack. Because you want to catch the ember in something, a uh, leaf, or there's been times I couldn't find a leaf, and I saw this piece of leather and I thought it would be perfect, so that's what I'm using it for. Okay, remember, hold it in your right hand, come up through this spot from the bottom, twist it. Now, um, before I get too far along, I want to make sure I make a bird's nest. And I collected some material. I collected some material earlier. So I've got some of my favorite. I've got some birch bark. This birch bark is also from a, um, it's from a river birch. That's why it's kind of a golden color. Looks almost like tobacco leaves. And I wish I had a big uh, clump of grass. Let me try to find a clump of grass because you need something to hold it together. I found a small cluster of grass. Now in the center of this I'm going to put a little bit of um, my favorite, other favorite, which is cedar. And you get the cedar to look like this. And I've shown it in other videos that you scrape it and it becomes all fluffy like that. So now I've got this set. So now we'll get started. Okay, once again, up through the center from the bottom, twist it, put it right by your instep, right, that's the center of your foot. And there we go. Start off sm smooth, slowly and smoothly. As you can see, it didn't take very long at all. Now, I'm just going to blow this into flame because I'm not making a fire or anything because it's getting late. Um, I'll, make, I'll come back and make another video. I'll show you some more fire techniques and I'll be here early enough that I can actually um, make a fire and cook and stuff. I just ran out after work today. See how handy this is. Makes it really controlled. There you go.
I'll put that out and I can save it. But there you have it. There you have it. I made a one stick fire. I did some uh, batoning, which I only do when um, I'm either making a bow drill set or making something. Um, I don't just baton willy nilly or I don't ever baton hard wood or anything like that because to me it's, it's hard on your equipment. The wood I always use is soft wood. So one stick fire and I did that by batoning the um, Habilis Bush Tools Trapper and then I made some feather sticks using the uh, Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro Survival Knife. Then I made a bow drill set, uh, first by splitting out the wood with the Habilis Trapper, and then finished carving it with the um, Ultimate Survival Knife. Then I carved out the notch and stuff with the Ultimate Survival Knife. And then I created the ember using my new uh, bearing blocks. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. And hope it was instructive. Please uh, subscribe, and um, if you like, if you like this channel or uh, you enjoy the videos, please subscribe, comment. I really covet your comments. If you have any suggestions or anything like that, feel free, and um, make sure you like it. Have a great day. God bless.